So today, we are going to talk about something called rational exponents. Now, when we say the word rational, what does rational actually mean? We've dealt with rational functions, right? Fraction or something? Say that, say that again? Oh, like a fraction or something? A fraction or something. That's yeah, that's actually exactly what it means. It means a fraction. So rational means ratio or a fraction. So when we're dealing with rational exponents, this is going to seem kind of weird to you, but we're going to deal with exponents that are actually fractions. Isn't that kind of strange that we can have exponents that are fractions? Right now you've dealt with squares or cubes or fourth powers. You've never actually dealt with a fractional exponent before. That's what we're going to talk about today. So rational exponents. Now the interesting thing is that I just said you've never seen a rational exponent before, which is actually a lie. You have seen a rational exponent before. It's just that we haven't dealt with them as an exponent. Here's the whole deal about section 10.2 and why it's in this section that has all to do with radicals. Every si single time that you've seen a root, a square root or a cube root or a fourth root, actually you've been dealing with a rational exponent. As a matter of fact, any root, <clears throat> any root that we've ever seen can be represented as a rational exponent. I'm going to show you how right now. So write this down, any root can be represented as a rational, that means fraction, rational exponent. Here's how. You remember talking about those nth roots, how we had like a, a radical like this, and then we had some sort of root out front. Now what would that type of root be if I just left it like that? Square, Square root. And if I had a, a cube root, what number would I put and where would I put it? Three. Three. Right in the little like indices part, the little crotch of this thing. Right there. That little thing. That's why I put a cube root. If I had a fourth root, I'd put a, four, a number four there. Or an nth root, for any root, I put a little n there. And whatever's on the inside, we're going to represent that with an a. So our radicand in this case is just a. Could be anything. Could be uh, x squared plus 3. Could be whatever I want it to be. Here's the deal. This is kind of neat. Every single time you've seen something like this, this actually represents a fractional exponent. And here's how you write it. You have, in this case, our base is a. It's whatever our radicand is. An nth root of a is the same thing as a to the 1 over n power. That's how you change from a root into a fractional exponent. Weird, huh? Why are we doing that? Why are we, why are we making these look like those? Well, tell you what. Do you know anything about exponents? If you multiply common bases, you add exponents, right? If you have an exponent to an exponent, you multiply. And if you divide, you subtract. We can do all that stuff with our roots now. We couldn't do that here. It wouldn't make any sense to, to do that. But as soon as we translate to a fractional or rational exponent, we can do all those things that you already learned. That's why we're translating these. Let's see if we can manage to, to change some of these from this form back into our roots. Are you guys ready to try some of this? Okay, let's do this. So first one, let's say that we had 25 to the 1 half power. 25 to the 1 half power. You can notice a couple things about this. Firstly, Firstly, where does our, where's our n go in our fractional exponent? Where's it go? Numerator or denominator? Denominator. And where's that 1 come from? I'll show you this right now. Uh, I'm not supposed to until later, but I'm going to give you a sneak peek, okay? Where this 1 comes from, what's the power of a right here? 1. That's where the 1 comes from. Okay, so this, this little preview of where that number comes from. Right now, this is just a to the first power. That's why we have a little one right there. You guys okay with that? Okay, good. So question, can I represent 25 to the 1 half as a type of root? Firstly, you got to tell me what type of root is it? Is it a square root, a cube root, a fourth root? What is it? Square. What tells you that? Just a 2. Yeah, that denominator right there tells you the type of root that you have. So if you have a 2 on the denominator, that means you're dealing with a square root. 
What's going to go on the inside of our square root? 25 to what power? First. Yeah, the first power because that number right there is a 1. How many feel alright with this? What is 25 to the 1 half power? Or in other words, what's the square root of 25? 5. Which means that you don't have to change it to this to find that number. In fact, if you have a calculator, you want to plug in 25 to the 1 half power, it will give you 5. Because it means the same thing. 25 to the 1 half and the square root of 25 are identical. Let's try a few more. Let's try 27 to the 1 third. Can you tell me, ladies and gentlemen, what type of root does this suggest? Q. Good. What tells you the Q? Because it's a denominator. Okay, so we are going to have a radical. We know that any rational exponent is the same thing as a radical. We just have to make sure that our root is the same. Here, square root here. We can't forget the 3. That's a cube root. On the inside, we will have 27. And can you tell me what is the cube root of 27? What do you think? Yeah, because 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27. Okay. We've dealt with these roots before. We're just now translating from here to here. By the way, you're going to get pretty good at this to where you're going to be able to look at these things and know immediately, oh, that's 5. That's the square root of 25. Oh, that's 3. That's the cube root of 3. So you'll get pretty good at that. Can you do it with just a variable without some numbers? Let's see if we can translate that. Ladies and gentlemen, what type of root am I dealing with? What type? Oh. Fifth root? Yeah. <laughs> Flipped around in your head, didn't it? Yeah, we got a, we got a fifth root here. That's all right. So we'll still have a radical. The denominator simply tells you what type of root you have. What's going to go on the inside of our root? X. Yeah. X to what power? So you can leave it just like that. That's a fifth root of x. There's no really, no, no way we can simplify that right now. Uh, there's no number, so we can't say like here was a five, here was a three. We can't do that. Let's try a couple more. Don't answer this question out loud, but I want you to think of it, okay? Now, of course, we're, we're getting pretty good at this. We know that's going to be 5, and that's going to be 3, and this is the fifth root of x. I want you to think of, don't answer, because I'm, I'm going to tell you the answer in a second. I want you to think of if this is possible or not. Don't say it loud. Just think. I see a lot of, I see a lot of, now here's the deal. A lot of people are thinking no right now because you have a negative, and what type of root is that? And what you know is that you can't have a, a negative inside of the square root. Nudge your head with me if you understand that, for sure. But here's what, what you need to understand. When you're dealing with exponents, if you have something like this, negative 4 to the third power, what this means, actually, you know what, let me make it to the fourth power. Negative the fourth power there. What negative 4 to the fourth power means is the opposite of 4 to the fourth. What I mean by that? This does not equal negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4. That's not the same thing. What this actually equals is, uh, here I'm trying to make this so you, you really understand it. Think of your order of operations. What comes first, multiplication or exponents? Hopefully exponents come before multiplication, right? PEMDOS. So if we have order of operations, it says you're supposed to do your exponents before you do any multiplication. So what this actually it can be written as, pay attention up here, you could write this as negative one times four to the fourth. Does that make sense to you? That is the same thing. And so what this means is negative one times four times four times four times four. Or in other words, negative whatever four times four times four times four is. Negative four to the fourth. Uh, 64 times four, 256? Negative 256. So that, that, even though you have a negative 4 to the 4th power, you're still getting a negative. Are you guys okay with this? Here's what I'm trying to say. Unless your negative is in parentheses, it is not being applied towards that exponent. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So in this case, is this negative 25 going to be inside of the square root? Or is it going to be outside of the square root? Outside. outside. It's going to be outside, yeah. How I would show it inside is if I had this. Watch on the board. If I had that then it would be inside the radical. Are you with me? If I don't have that, very important that you get this, by the way. 
If I don't have that, that says a square root of 25. This is the opposite of the square root of 25. That's what that is. Is that possible? Yeah. That is definitely possible. Do you see the difference here? Okay, so that negative, if it's not in parentheses, it will not be inside of the radical. If it is in parentheses, then it will be. This one is actually equal to how much? Yeah, let's try a few more with that in mind. Negative 27 y to the sixth all to the one third power. All to the one third power. Firstly, I want you to identify if we have a root here. Do we have a root? A radical? What tells you I'm going to have a radical here? What type of exponent do we have? Okay, good. So anytime you have a fraction exponent, it means a radical, for sure. What type of a radical do we have? What type of root? Cube root. All right. And is the negative going to be inside the cube root or not? Inside. inside or not. Yeah, why? Because Now, I want you to notice the difference. Here, there's no parentheses. It's outside. Right? Use your order operations, that, that idea. Exponents come before multiplication. This is being multiplied by negative 1. Here, because it's in the parentheses, this says, oh, okay, I have the cube root. Sure. But since this is all connected with those parentheses, that's going to be inside of my radical. Raise your hand if you're okay with that one. Okay, I'll show you how to simplify those in a little bit. Uh, we're not going to quite go through that. Well, I guess we could actually. We could do that now. Let's simplify that. Do you remember how to simplify those from the, the very first section we did in this, in this chapter? I hope so. Do we know how to do the cube root of negative 27? Sure. How about the cube root of y to the 6? Remember how to do that? There's two methods. You would write this as something to the third power and cross those out. Or you'd write this as as many third powers as you can. I'm going to do that method. So here you do, go, okay, cube root of negative 27. I'm going to leave that for just a second because I know I can take that cube root. And instead of y to the 6th, I'll do y to the 3rd, y to the 3rd. Why am I doing y to the 3rd power? Why is that? Okay, so I want to match the power with the type of root that I have. So here we'll say, what's the cube root of negative 27, ladies and gentlemen? Good. What's the cube root of y cubed? Those are gone, right? I just have what left? Okay, so, so with both of them, I'm going to have y to the second. Absolutely. Yeah, this is going to give me a single y. This is going to give me a single y. So this all together, you guys are right, negative 3y squared. Absolutely. You guys remember that from before, actually before our test, wasn't it? Yeah. All back. Let me show you one more thing. I'll give you something to do on your own, then we'll move on. Seven x to the one fifth. Now this one, this one I got a lot of people on right, right off the bat because a lot of you were thinking, oh, this isn't possible because you thought the negative went with that exponent. I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this real, real careful. Okay, the one fifth is the one fifth above the seven, above the x, or above both of them? Just the x. Do you see how that that one fifth is just above the x? Yes. 